sometimes I don't know exactly what I'm doing. And sometimes I do. Sometimes I get this kind of like, you know, chair set up and kind of like all set up outside to record and I'm thrilled about it. <laughs> and then they start doing the power blowers and power mowers and getting all kinds of noise. And guess what? It's a beautiful day out and I want to sit there and enjoy it with you. Bingo! They decide to work. And then if I come in here, they stop. And then I go back out, they start. And I come back in, I know what's going on. So, <laughs> I guess we're stuck in here. So, praise the Lord. In that, I rejoice. I'm amazed that this devotional today blessed me in a powerful way, I didn't read the whole thing because I usually wait to share it with you, but I started to look at it because I was getting up late and I knew I was going to get up a little bit late, which was like, I don't know, still early for most people, but anyways, later than what I normally do. And because I did, I decided, oh, you know, there's no pressure. <laughs> I always put pressure on myself. But there's no pressure to share or to get up there and to get all this stuff, you know, on the internet, get the, you know, news run going and get all these networks going and get the blogs up and get this, that, and the other thing done, you know, because, you know, after all, just like I tell you, you know, I seek God first. Right, right, right. You agree? Right, right, right. That's a wink, by the way. Sure, Lord. <laughs> so God said, eh. And I took a bath. <laughs> Thank God I did. Now let's go get some perspirant. <laughs> Anyways, took a bath. God started talking. Looked at the cover of this, you know, the first line or two and went, oh boy. So after God kept me in there for a while, making me remember all these things that I've gone through, as well as the scriptures he wanted me to share, I... Started a series on divorce. And <laughs> what? <laughs> well, <laughs> you're going to have to go to the Bible study site and find it. You know, it's kind of kind of one of those things. I call it a Vid Devo special. You know, it's a series of tapes that, you know, put together for uh, people that have gone through divorce, people that are going through divorce, and people that haven't been divorced. So who does that cover? Everyone. Uh, but a lot of times people don't talk about certain subjects. So somebody obviously wants to. So anyways, yeah, it's a Bible study. It's about an hour long, you know. And that was the first one. And each one will probably be about an hour long. Maybe. I don't know. But we'll see. But God, you know, took over and shared what he wanted to, and now we're back on target, you know, sharing devotionals. But it was kind of neat because I was excited to share, you know, a lot of what, you know, I had gone through as well as what the scriptures say, because most of the time when I've read everything that I can find on the internet, that I can find on Usenet, that I can find in list servers, that I can find in, you know, I don't go to Christian bookstores, but, you know, generally speaking, you know, Christian bookstores, or, you know, tapes and videos and, you know, different ministries that have commented or, you know, have dealt with the subject. I don't know about you, you know, maybe I just have a different criteria, but I'm not always satisfied that they got the answer, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, God bless you all that were, you know, contributed to my learning, you know, because I do believe that all the different pieces and parts that, you know, God has taken, you know, in my life, you know, and applied it from all these different men of God that have actually some really good wisdom, you know, about part of what they're dealing with, you know, and I think that the reason why, you know, I only get part of the answer from each one of them is because they're only dealing with part of the problem, you know. My personal opinion is that if they knew the big picture of all that it involved, they'd probably answer all the issues. Of course, it would take longer than seven tapes, you know, but they would probably deal with it, you know, in their own way and time and purpose. 
And I think the scriptures are very clear about what divorce is, divorce does, the consequences, and all the actions, and the people, and the types, and similes, and metaphors, and scriptures, and ramifications, and spiritual applications, and, you know, exhortations, and all the other ramifications of divorce. But, while hermeneutic and homiletic sounds good, you know, in a theological kind of way, don't you kind of find that, you know, when you get down to the nitty-gritty, you know, when you get, you know, where somebody's, you know, busting down the door, you know, to get, you know, visitation rights, or, you know, you got two people that come into your life, you know, that you go, man, what a mess, and they're both Christians, you know, what do I do? <laughs> don't you see that sometimes the cheap answers really don't work? Or they work sort of, but they're really not kind of like all that. So maybe there's a little more to the subject that meets the eye. And unfortunately, or praise the Lord, some of us have dealt with that subject extensively, <laughs> not just personally, but also with other people too. And when you're a Christian who wanted to know the answer for everything and be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within me as well as the hope that could be given to you and to apply to everyone else. Okay, you know, and you keep saying that God will tell you whatever it is that you need to know because if you don't know it, then he's going to tell you and that he'll give you wisdom because he said that if any man like wisdom, let him ask God who will break the top and give it to all men liberally, then you kind of stick your neck way out there so you better have an answer. Well, you'll have to watch the tape to see what the answer is. <laughs> oh, well. Maybe you agree. <laughs> and maybe you don't. <sighs> but such as it is, God answered. And God shared. And God blessed. And I got blessed. But in this, what I rest in is... As we share his word today, I'm blessed because I get the opportunity to be faithful to the things he told me to do first and now go to the things that I know he wants me to do second. Because that which he required of me was that I would start that series, and I did, faithful to the word he gave me, the example of specifics he told me to do and the reality of actually putting into place that which he said he wanted done. So you see, that's kind of what we do in devotions, is we learn to listen, we learn to apply, we learn to obey, and then we learn to walk away. In other words, I'm done with what that is, and I don't think about it now. It's like, okay, it's done, you know, posted it, bingo, it's gone. So now we share that which God wants us to know and to do and to be and to live and to adjust to in His will for us in our lives as He reveals by His Spirit the Word, that he's given us in his devotions because we are devoted to God and we want to do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So we ask him all through the day. We pray for him to move in our hearts all through the night and we walk with him all through the day and night, allowing his spirit to work in us, both to do and to will of his good pleasure. Da 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 and he constantly renewed, and be constantly renewed, in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh and mental spiritual attitude. Ephesians 4.23 Well, gee, that's what we're doing. Expect God to show you something new today. And that's kind of what he did to me, you know, like with the divorce series. You know, it's like, oh, okay. I thought we were doing something else, Lord. Some people resist change, but God created us to need variety in our life. If we do the same thing over and over and over again, and again and again and again all over, over again and over again, here we go beginning again. We get burned out on it. <laughs> yeah. Hello. God will keep our lives exciting if we seek Him every day. Now, God doesn't say, I want you to go out and look for excitement, you thrill seeker. God doesn't say, uh, I want you to put yourself in jeopardy, you thrill seeker. God doesn't say that he wants you to go out and try new things. 
He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says to seek him because when you do and you let him work through you, then the same things that you did before, you'll discover something new. And the same things that you thought were old will become revealed to you in a new way as the Holy Spirit has his way and you don't have yours. So it's not always about something new, but it's a variety to what God can do in you. See the difference? One is you looking, the other is God revealing. So when we seek him, yes, that's the right way to look, but we don't look for outward things. We look for upward things that come from inward realities that we can express outwardly to everyone else around us. Look for new ways of doing things. If you've been working on the same job for 30 years, driving to it the same way, at least find a new route to work. You could take once in a while to get there. Do something to invite newness into your life so you can discover God's many ways of revealing himself to you. I like to tell people, and I used to tell them this in the Messianic movement, you know, when it first got started, every Jew should be a Christian and every Christian should be a Jew. Now, I, you know, you've got to take that with a grain of salt. It's not exactly what you think I mean, and it's not exactly what people took it to mean, but, you know, whatever it means to you, then maybe God will use it. But what I meant by that was like, hey, look, you know, if you like Friday night, you know, going to Erev Shabbat, you know, which is what we call uh, the time where the family, literally, the mama la, papa la, baby la, <laughs> when the Jewish family gets together and they express to God the joy of the family in doing kind of a little service, you know, it's kind of like setting up these little altars in their homes, you know, like you take a couple of candles, you know, and the woman in the house, you know, especially if she's a wife, you hope, you know, puts on a little, you know, kind of apron-like thing, you know. It's kind of like what the Catholics did, you know, when they put on a little apron thing, you know, the old-time Catholics, you know, when they went to church. Well, this isn't meant to be like, holy, you know. So, you know, if you're a messianic out there, you're probably going to go, you know, I disagree with you. Tough. <laughs> I've been around since Jews for Jesus, chosen people, and, you know, all of, before there was messianic and before Chumney came along. Hello. <laughs> but anyways, in the Jewish heritage, it's just a family event. It's kind of like, you know, let's get the family together for a good time. Let's have a good meal. Let's see how good God has been to us. It's like a Thanksgiving every Friday. And that's what it's meant to be. It's meant to be a Thanksgiving. And you know how big you make your Thanksgiving? And I don't mean football. TV's over here. Couch is over there. I'm crucified between the two. But... On Friday nights, you know, it's just a family thing, you know, so the woman, you know, gets a chance to prepare the meal and bless the candles, you know, and she says Kiddush, you know, and there's a blessing there. And if you're a Christian and you take that blessing and you make it into communion service every Friday night, which is kind of neat, especially if you're family and you got kids, because you see the father is supposed to bless the kids. Oh, blessed are you, kid. You don't have to use a Jewish blessing. Bless them whatever you want to do. God bless you. You sneezed. Well, kazoom type. Anyways, you bless them, you enjoy them, you thank them for being alive, you get a chance to, hey, you know, I know you've been gone all week because you've been avoiding me and I would have beat you, you little turkey, but now you get a chance to not whip them, but bless them. You're not disciplining them, you're not grabbing them by the head and hanging them up, you know, and telling them what they did wrong. You're blessing them as a family unit. You are honoring what God has done in their life one day a week, Friday night. Wow. That's a different way to look at it. Thank God it's Friday. I thought we were supposed to go out and party. Maybe it is a party. A family party. So anyways, with that, you know, if you'd like to do that on Friday night, great, go do it. And then if you're kind of like this Sabbath keepers, you know, where you got to do some Shabbos thing, you know, and you think you got to go to shul, you know, in the morning. Well, fine. Get up in the morning, go down to synagogue, do your thing, you know, or your assembly or whatever you are, especially if you're messianic and you're messing around with it, you know, you're just playing around with it, you know, you haven't really paid the price of what it takes to do all these things, you know, consequences of it, you know, and how 
you know, centuries of people have died for some of these things, you know, and uh, as soon as their little persecution comes, I'm sure the Messianics aren't going to stay as messy as they are because the antics are going to be over and suddenly it's going to become a little messy to stay a Messiantic or a Messianic or whichever you want to be. But, okay, fine, you know, go ahead. Or like Sabbath keepers, you know, if we had persecution like we had in Germany, you know, in those days, because if you were out there in a type of worship service on Saturday, they didn't care if you were a Jew or a Christian. You know what? You were rounded up because it was Saturday and you were supposed to be doing that because they were rounding up all the Jews, so they took you too. <laughs> Ooh, concentration. Oh, boy, are we ever. So if you got to do that on Saturday, fine. Go do it and enjoy it. You know, oy, pray. Man, I used to go to a, you know, synagogue, you know, in the morning on Saturday. You know, the rabbis, you know, we'd go early because we were helping the rabbis set up, you know. And then you dive in. Oh, man. You think you pray? Three hours of prayer in the morning? Saturday? Are you kidding me? Oh, boy. At least I'm awake. Of course, then you hear all the politics being talked and all the other things of business, you know, and this, that, and the other thing, rather than God. This is what Shabbos is about? Then, you, you know, you have your meal, you know, noonday meal, you know, on Saturday, you know, and you get to eat. And then you go for your Shabbos walk, you know, and you walk, and, you know, reflect on peace, you know. Of course, you're supposed to do that Friday night on in Israel. It's kind of neat there, but, you know. Really, Shabbos doesn't work a lot, you know, except you're, when you're in Israel. And then in Israel, it's kind of neat, you know. But anyways, that's a long story. We won't go there. So then I used to tell them, you know, okay, you want to do that? Well, then fine. If you do all that, then go to church on Sunday, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, for God's sake. Because then you get a perspective. You balance out the two. So I used to tell the Christian, hey, go to a Shabbos. Go see what it is before you start telling everybody what they can't do, what it really is. And then if you're over here, go over there. See what that's about. Enjoy that, too. And for other people, man, you know, if you don't want to get burned out on your Christianity and you're kind of getting like where you're picking on people in your own denomination, go to another one. Check out what they're doing once. I'm not saying you got to, you know, change affiliations. If you're a Catholic, check out the Lutheran. If you're a Lutheran, hey, check out the Episcopalian. Just once, you know. At least go around once to see what they do. You're not going to get infected. It's not like, you know, Religion is a disease, you know, and you got to wash it off as soon as you walk out the door. <gasps> oh, no, I'm a Catholic. If I walk in that church, it'll fall down. Man, I was in a synagogue and a Catholic priest was teaching, you know. I mean, seriously, he was up in Anchorage. You know, one of those things where Jews, you know, invite religion in, you know, and they let, a, you know, different people from different religions come in and talk, you know, and share. <laughs> Go figure. But you as a born again Christian, you can go anywhere you want to. The Spirit of God's going to use you. He's going to talk to you. You know, I mean, I was in Modesto one time and I, I'm not even sure where it was. It was outside of Modesto someplace and there was this little tiny church, you know, and I was helping my sister out and it was Sunday morning and I went in there, you know, and it was like a square box church with a steeple, you know, and man, all the people started coming in. All the men came in and they were wearing like bow ties, you know, or the, the, String ties, you know, or some some kind of tie, you know, I can't think of what it's called. And the women were all wearing dresses and bonnets. I thought maybe it was a dress up day at first, until I saw everybody that way. So when I went in, I went in the door, you know, and the greeter, you know, had a firm handshake and he greeted me and he looked me in the eye, you know, and he said, Something about God bless you, welcome to blah blah blah. Please make yourself at home or something. Some formal greeting, you know. But a solid handshake, I mean, it was like really solid, you know, kind of grip. And he greeted every single person right there at the door. Because it was a narrow door, believe me. It's just kind of weird, these old little tiny churches. There's a farm community. Big fields all around it, just this little one little steeple church thing. You know, really, kind of like, you know, here's church, here's steeple, open doors, see all the people. So I went in there, you know, and God had led me there. And right as I was walking up the steps, God said, don't say a word. And I went, okay. So, you know, when they agreed, man, okay. Then I sat down, you know, and all the men I didn't know were sitting on one side, and all the women were sitting on the other side. I went, well, they're not Jewish, and they're not Quaker, but okay. So I got up and, you know, said goodbye to the woman I was talking to. No, I'm kidding. That's a joke. It's a joke. Let's get serious. I went on the side with the men, you know, and uh, then the service started, and uh, they all rose and stood. And then they started singing Calvary Chapel songs, the worship leaders. And I was like, 
I know the song. I started worshiping, and I'm like, I got my eyes closed, you know, I'm just worshiping the Lord, you know, and I'm just, I don't have a quiet voice, I'm loud. And then, you know, they were, they were doing okay. They were, they, you know, they were singing to, you know, the crowd, but I know that I was kind of loud and didn't mean to be, but I just like the Lord, you know, I love the Lord. <laughs> so they were singing these Calvary Chapel songs, old ones, you know, like, I can't even think of one of them, what it was, but it was great, you know, and I was just blessed, you know, so I kind of, they got done and I sat down. Then the, the preacher got up and he looked like Elmer, well, not Elmer Gantry, one of those, almost looked like he had a black hat, like a Methodist or something, you know, and he wasn't. With like, you know, kind of the white tie, you know, or white shirt and a black tie, you know, like you see in Western sort of, you know, like those tie ties, you know, they put a bow in and kind of hangs down. And he was all fiery and, you know, preaching. And I was like, I don't know, I almost got bored. You know, I mean, sometimes some of these preachers, you know, I was like, okay, fine. You know, I, I get it, you know, <laughs> got it, get it, got it, good, I'm gone. You know, so I was like, okay, and walked down the stairs, you know, and outside they all were gathered, all the women were on one side, all the men were on the other, you know, and you shook the hand of the preacher as you left, you know, and as I went out the door, you know, people were still, you know, they were talking in their groups, you know, and they welcomed me and they said, would you like to go to Sunday come to meeting, you know, and I went, what's that? I said, well, we have chicken over at, you know, so-and-so's and we're getting ready to go there, all of us, you know, they all <laughs> go. And I said, well, you know, thank you, but, you know, I'll, I'll pass this time, you know, and he was polite to them and I politely made my excuses. And then the worship leaders came out and they, were, <laughs> they go, oh, thank you for sharing, you know, a husband and wife, you know, and I said, so you know Calvary? And they go, oh yeah, Calvary Chapel, yeah, we know Calvary Chapel, blah, 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 you know, the songs, you know, Mary, not the music, you know, and it was like, he started talking for a few minutes and I said, he said, you know, I, and I wanted to say, so what are you doing here? <laughs> but that's where God sent them because they, as they were talking, they began to share how they, the Lord brought them there and they were in this farm community and this is what they do and God sent them there and that's what they do at that church. And I thought, boy, do they stick out like a thumb. And then I realized, you know, they don't stick out like a thumb. They stick out like a light. And they brought the light with them and they brought the love of God with them and they shared the joy of the celebration of Jesus because they were worship leaders and the people were blessed. Don't be surprised if you've gotten settled in your tradition or in your repetition and you're very comfortable where you're at but you haven't completely fulfilled the destiny that God wants for you to go out from your comfort zone to some place he wants to bless others with what you have known. Because if you know Jesus, get up and tell somebody about it. Go somewhere that they want you and need you to be, dare I say, you.